एस चांद प्रेजेंट एजुकेशनल वीडियो लेक्चर्स डिफिकल्ट कॉन्सेप्ट मेड इजी स्टडी एनी वेयर एनी टाइम हेलो स्टूडेंट्स आई एम समीर कुमार वेलकम टू एस चांद अकेडमी ओके वी आर लर्निंग प्रोबेबिलिटी इन स्टैटिस्टिक्स राइट दिस इज अ फील्ड दैट इज very important and in today's scenario where you can see that everywhere you can find artificial intelligence and data science and these things and the use of this one these things so they are all based on probability and statistics right if you want to study this topic in detail refer to the book by s john publishing link is provided in the description box everywhere you can find artificial intelligence and data science and these things and the use of this one these things so they are all based on probability and statistics right the maths behind artificial intelligence data science and all of it is that of probability and statistics mostly right where you have to predict things where you have to predict classify and do such operations right so for emerging fields like data science and ai you have to be good in probability statistics and similar fields in mathematics okay so continuing our journey we'll be seeing bernoulli's and binomial distribution today right now i want to tell you that what is the use of learning binomial distribution or bernoulli's distribution right so in the markets you must have seen that uh you go and buy lottery tickets right now suppose there are some n numbers of lottery tickets that are being announced and then you want to make sure for yourself that what is the money you are putting in and what are the chances of you getting a prize okay suppose there are 10 or 20 number of prizes in the lottery and so you want to decide for yourself that okay what is the minimum number of lotteries should i buy to you know ensure some given chance for myself to win something from the lottery right or is it going to be beneficial for me at all to buy the lottery right so these small decisions you can take using binomial distribution right you can decide for yourself right that was just one example we'll see mathematically how and there are many other cases where we can use binomial distribution but not is distribution right so one by one we'll be seeing them right first one is the bernoulli's distribution right so for this one this is a very simple type of a distribution where there is an event where there is an event like tossing a coin okay like tossing a coin okay now a fair coin if you take tossing a coin there is a 50% chance there is a 1 by 2 chance of getting a heads and 1 by 2 chance of getting a tails right this is the example of bernoulli's experiment okay 50% chance of getting a heads 50% chance of getting a tails right so this may not be always the case okay even for tossing a coin if the coin is not fair okay it's an unfair or biased coin so it may happen that heads the probability is like 0.6 and tails the probability is 0. four okay probability of tails can be 0.4 also for a bias coin okay, for an unfair coin this may happen but there are only two results of the experiment that you are doing of tossing a coin there are only two outcomes heads or a tails okay if the probability of heads whatever it be if i call it something theta okay let's say theta or p whatever you want to say is the probability of getting a heads what is the probability of getting a tails getting the tail the probability is 1 minus theta right 1 minus theta is the probability of getting a tails right so to define the bernoulli's function okay the probability for x is given by p to the power x okay or theta i have taken so let's take theta to the power x and 1 minus theta to the power 1 minus x 
right? 1 minus theta to the power 1 minus x. This is the function. This is the, and x can be 0 or 1. x can be 0 or 1. This is how the function for Bernoulli's experiment defined, right? If x be 0, if x is 0 here, this will become 1 and this will become 1 minus theta to the power 1, okay? That is this, okay? And if p is 1, okay? So, this will become theta only. That part will become 1, right? So, only two outcomes are there and this is how you can explain. This is the function, okay? It's a very simple kind of a distribution but still important to understand the binomial distribution, right? Very simple example of a Bernoulli experiment is tossing a coin, right? The function is here for the two values, 0 or 1, correct. Now, we may be performing a series of Bernoulli's experiments, right? We may perform a series of such experiments, like you toss a coin, let's say 10 times. You toss a coin 10 times, okay? And then you have to decide that how many times you are going to get a head. Maybe what is the probability of getting a head three times out of the total 10 times you are tossing the coin, okay? So, we will try to explore a scenario like that. So, Bernoulli's experiment is one single experiment. A series of Bernoulli's experiment leads to the binomial distribution, okay? It leads to the binomial distribution, okay? Suppose you toss a coin five times. So now you see, every time you toss all the experiments, all the individual Bernoulli's experiments, they are independent of each other. What is the result of the first toss is not going to affect the result of the second toss or the third toss, right? So they are all independent events, okay? Independent, each experiment has each experiment has two outcomes like Bernoulli's each of them is a Bernoulli experiment Bernoulli experiment has two outcomes so tossing a coin five times okay is an example of Bernoulli's this follows the Bernoulli's distribution all the different tosses they are independent of each other right and each experiment has two outcomes, okay? And the probability of each outcome is fixed, okay? Has fixed of the outcomes, right? So, this is the characteristic of a binomial distribution, binomially distributed experiment, okay, like tossing a coin five times, okay. So, suppose <clears throat> I want to figure out how to figure out, let's say, if you toss the coin five times, if you toss the coin five times, okay. Now, one, two, three, four, five. Okay. Now, if the question arises that what is the probability of getting two heads? What is the probability of getting two heads? Right. And suppose, suppose the, it is a fair coin. Okay. It may not be a fair coin always, but suppose for this example, I take that it is a fair coin. Okay. That means the probability of getting a heads for any toss is 1 by 2 and probability of getting a tails is 1 by 2 again, okay? Assuming this is a fair coin. The probability of getting a heads is a half, getting a tails is another half, right? 
Now getting two heads, I am trying to figure out what is the probability of getting two heads out of these five heads. Okay. So what are the possibilities? It may be something like heads, tails, 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 heads. Okay. Or it may be like heads, heads, tails, tails, tails. Okay. And similarly, right? Similarly, there can be other order also in which you can get two heads and other three are tails, right? If I use permutation and combination, the total number of these arrangements, the total number of these arrangements is what? The total number of toss is five, okay? So it is like the number of ways you can arrange two heads and three tails in a row, right? That number is this number n. How many such possibilities are there? Can be written as 5 factorial upon 3 factorial, 3 tails and 2 factorial here. 5 factorial upon 3 factorial upon 2 factorial, right? So this is the number of ways, okay? This n here, the number of ways you can arrange 2 heads and 3 tails in a row is 5 factorial upon 3 factorial upon 2 factorial, right? Fine. And what is the probability of having one such arrangement? Okay. Because they are all independent events, they are all independent events. The probability of any one happening, let's say this one, probability of this thing happening is what? Probability of the first toss being a heads is 1 by 2. Okay, probability of the second one having tails is 1 by 2 again. Okay, third one tails is 1 by 2, 1 by 2 and 1 by 2. Okay, all the events they occur with the same probability and I am simply multiplying the probabilities. Why? Because the events are independent. Okay, these are all independent events. That is the property of the binomial distribution only, right? So, the probability of two heads is, this is the probability of any one of these happening. Any one of these happening, this is the probability. 1 upon 2 whole to the power 5. And how many such arrangements are there? These many, right? So, I will multiply by 5 factorial upon 3 factorial upon 2 factorial, right? So, this expression, whatever be the value, is the probability of getting exactly 2 heads, okay? This is the probability of getting exactly 2 heads of the 5 tosses you are doing for a fair coin, right? So, this thing only, this was an example of binomial distribution. I will try to generalize this now, okay? I will try to generalize this and give a formula for the same, okay? So, suppose there are n number of n number of independent trials, okay? And there are two outcomes. There are two outcomes, okay? Outcome number one Okay, outcome number one has a probability, let's say, P. So, what is the probability of the second outcome? It has to be 1 minus P, isn't it? It has to be 1 minus P because there are only two possible outcomes. So, if the probability of the first one is P, the other one becomes 1 minus P, right? There are N number of total independent trials. Capital is the total number of independent trials. Okay. Now, if someone says that what is the probability of getting R, getting R number of probability of getting R number of 
so let's say i name this is outcome 1 this is outcome 2 so r number of let's say outcome 1 okay r number of outcome 1 for outcome 1 for example that in the case of tossing a coin it was heads or tails okay outcome 1 would be head outcome 2 would be tails okay so outcome 1 here the probability is p right fine so out of the n number in total out of the n number in total you need first r number of first outcome okay so how many remains for the second one n minus r right that means you need n minus r numbers of second outcome right fine the probability of this one the first outcome is p the probability of the second outcome is 1 minus p isn't it right so the total probability so how many ways you can arrange r number of first outcome and n minus r number of the second outcome so again the number of ways of arranging the probabilities will be n c r p to the power r 1 minus p whole to the power n minus r okay in a similar way that we did for the coin coin experiment okay so yes this becomes the probability of getting r outcomes as the first one and the remaining n minus r outcomes of the second second outcome right so <clears throat> if i explain the formula ncr is the number of ways of selecting r numbers out of the total n experiments okay and those r experiments have i need them to be of first type okay the probability for which is p so for each of it p into p into p r times that is p to the power r and for the remaining n minus r outcomes i need to be of the second type okay so the probability for the second outcome is 1 minus p so 1 minus p times 1 minus p times 1 minus p n minus r times okay so this gives you the final probability okay probability of r this here is the expression for this one fine for n independent trials probability of getting exactly r number of favorable outcomes is n c r times p to the power r times 1 minus p whole to the power n minus r okay right so if you talk in terms of the random variable x this can be written as in terms of x you can write for r you can write x okay for right you can r you can replace by x here so random variable we usually denote by x so px is equal to ncx p to the power x 1 minus p whole to the power n minus x what is this ncx this is n factorial upon x factorial upon n minus x factorial okay that is obviously n c x so in terms of random variable x the probability of x can be given by this if the distribution is binomial okay so this becomes the expression for the binomial distribution right so we'll see an example of how the binomial distribution can be used in our real life obviously if you are learning something maths or science it has to have some use in our real life okay it should be helping us in some way so we'll see a practical example of how the binomial distribution and its use can be helpful for us in real life scenario okay now quality learning is easily available at your doorstep. 
एस चांद अकेडमी ब्रिंग्स डिटेल्ड लेक्चर्स बेस्ड ऑन ए आई सी टी ई करिकुलम एज पर द न्यू एजुकेशन पॉलिसी ट्वेंटी ट्वेंटी सो डू नॉट फर्गेट टू सब्सक्राइब टू द एस चांद अकेडमी एंड एक्ट इज द वाइड वर्ल्ड ऑफ नॉलेज कन्वीनियंटली सिटिंग एट ए होम स्टे कनेक्टेड एंड कीप वॉचिंग एस चांद अकेडमी हैप्पी लर्निंग Dear students, welcome back to S Chand Academy. I am Samir Kumar. We are seeing a real life scenario, an example of how we can use the binomial distribution, right? So we have to find the probability that seven of ten persons will recover from a tropical disease if we can assume independence, and the probability is zero point eight that any one of them will recover from the disease. Okay. so the question is saying that there are 10 people there are 10 person okay the probability of one person recovering okay the probability of one person recovering is 0.8 here okay so p here becomes 0.8 okay the probability that a person will recover okay so suppose 10 person are affected by the tropical disease what is the probability that exactly 7 that exactly 7 so if i have to go by the formula the probability of x for a binomially distributed function is n c x p to the power x 1 minus p whole to the power n minus x right so if i have to go by this formula for binomial distribution i can find i have to find here for x being 7 okay i have to find for x is equal to 7 so i can write p x is equal to 7 will plug the values what is n here n is 10 okay for this question n is 10 that is the total number of people So ten C seven P is zero point eight zero point eight whole to the power seven one minus P is zero point two whole to the power ten minus seven is three. Okay, this will give you the probability of exactly seven people recovering from the disease. Okay, so you see. how in the field of medical science also suppose you know there is a epidemic or pandemic or some something like we had corona covid right so the statistical analysis that like this can be useful to analyze the effectiveness of a medicine or how to approach a particular scenario in the case of a disease outburst okay so this is a small example that 10 people were suffering the probability we test the the drug or whatever medicine we have created we test on a person we find that okay the probability on an average eight people recover out of 10 people so that gives you the probability of a person recovering that is 0.8 okay so for this scenario seven people exactly seven people will recover from the disease this is the probability if you want to find out the numbers Uh, 10 C 7 is going to be what? 10 9 8 6. So this comes out to be approximately 0.2. Okay. That means there is a 20% chance. There is a 20% chance that given the scenario where a person recovers eight times out of ten, exactly seven people out of ten. suffering people will recover 20% is the chance right this was a example of binomial distribution fine <coughs> thank you if you want to study this topic in detail refer to the book by s john publishing link is provided in the description box if you found our video interesting please like share and subscribe and do not forget to press the bell icon
All rights reserved. This video has been prepared for educational purposes only. No part of it may be reproduced or copied without the permission of the copyright holder.